This is the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is October 15th, 2019, and what a great day today, and Miss Vegas is going to bring us our watch list. Yeah, we're going to talk about Facebook, Baba, Roku, NVIDIA, and Goldman Sachs. <clears throat> and my gosh, so many great things happened today. So let's first talk about Facebook. Um, as you guys know, I've talked about this before, about Facebook having you know, a Libra platform. And, uh, you know, Libra is one of the um, platforms that they have for the cryptocurrency. Many people were invested in it, like Visa, MasterCard, PayPal, those companies have kind of pulled out. But nevertheless, Facebook has gone ahead and they launched their cryptocurrency despite high profile defections. So we could see as a result that there was a reaction from the market. And obviously the market liked this news and we could see here that um facebook had a beautiful run we had the option calls in play and jim if you want to just take a look at those calls yep uh we took the calls here for the 190 strike and they were at the time 30 cents which is 30 dollars and these ran all the way to 218 each obviously not everyone's going to hold until it gets that high but let me tell you a lot of people made over a hundred percent two hundred percent three hundred percent five hundred percent six hundred percent i mean the numbers are just endless and congratulations to all those traders but it just really shows that a small account can really grow um so jim let's hear about facebook and what you think about this chart well here's the one year and the 20 day chart right here on facebook and um we had kind of we hit a resistance level where we had or pretty close to the resistance level where that triple top was at 190.87 and you can see it right here at the 190.87 we had on the 20 day chart you got a little head and shoulders but that that right shoulder got a little weak and it pulled back to 173.09 then we have what you call miss vegas would call a pocket pivot where it pulls back and then it bounces on up. So it's bounced back up to almost that resistance level that I have at 190.87. This can pull back a little bit and I'm gonna add me another trend line right here at the 188, looks to me like about 188.46. And I need to move this up here, change that to that. And then you got a 188.46. So we're going to go to the daily now. And I'm going to put Facebook in here. So this is what I'm seeing. We kind of have a descending pattern right now. After the great news it did have, you can see we have lower, lower highs. And then we have a neckline right here, right around the 188, which is a support area of 188.77. Mm -hmm. So I want to keep this 188.62 a strong support level i'd hate for it to go down below that but if it can we have a little channel right in here between 186.20 and 187.55 usually when i see a stock that runs up like this it likes to pull back and consolidate and sometimes in the morning it'll dip down and then it'll start bouncing back up so that keep that 187.55 in mind for and then we have the low low support and i've got another one right here at 186.73 and I think we can break that. If we pull back to that 186.73, that'll be your third support. And your first resistance we need to break will be that 190.87. And this was a great call on the option land. And good job, Miss Vegas. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Baba. Baba. Alibaba. Well, you know, Alibaba is, you know, obviously part of the Chinese stocks. I mean, there's many large cap stock leaders in China. You know, we have Tencent, we have China Life, we have the um, China Petroleum and Chemical Corp. But we also have companies like, obviously, Alibaba. And, you know, it's kind of continued to defeat um, the investors' fears in a very micro-charged environment. And, um, you know, they did top uh, street profit and sales forecasts in mid-August. So, you know, there's always going to be something or someone trying to get people away from buying BABA, even though it's actually a good company. Um, 
you know, remember there was that chatter on social media about delisting the Chinese stocks. I mean that, you know, you just got to ignore all that noise. Um, but definitely, you know, BABA is promising. I mean, it definitely looks one to come out on top from the China stocks and one that you should be keeping your eye on out. Um, definitely, I think last week's price action showed that shares of BABA are looking to confirm a bullish engulfing candlestick, which does put it above the 50% retracement levels of the base. Um, so I think we should be watching BABA to signal a bullish crossover, and it definitely looks extremely promising at this point. Um, I definitely think BABA right now, we could see maybe, I think we'll have resistance around, in my opinion, as it continues its bullishness, uh, maybe towards 185, and then we'll probably have some resistance around 195. So Jim, let's hear about BABA chart. Okay, well, BABA right now, we kind of pulled back right to my where I call my equilibrium on the chart at 174.99, which is a pivot point area. It can drop down to this 172.89, and then we have another support right in here. I'm going to chalk this one up at 173.92. So I'm looking here at the 20 day. You can see it was been a pretty had a real good run from 129 all the way up to 195. And then a lot of more of that trade war talk started coming in and it pulled on back, bounced up, pulled back. We've had on the yearly chart, we've had higher lows and we've had higher highs. So we're right now in the middle of that place, which I would call a pivot point on a yearly chart. And it also looks like it is on the 20 day so we're going to pull up the daily one minute now and like I said that 174.99 is a good support area and if it pulls back below this and there's got another support right here at 174.58 now this can pull back strongly just on a headline or maybe you know but right now we're into the Christmas season we think this is going to have real good earnings again as they come out and we're going to have a low low support here at 173.92 with their first second support at 174.58 and then that first one at 174.99 the resistance that we need to get to is right here at 176 if we can hit that we got it almost had a triple top up here a little bit lower highs but actually you know pretty strong resistance right there at 176.59 so if we break down pull back it's going to be those first three numbers that I called out all the way down I don't think we're going to see that 172.89 unless the market just turns nasty red but the resistance that we're going to have to break it's going to be that 176.59 and you can stop this video at any time and write these other two numbers down I'm more or less a, been doing the extended trend line method that I've developed over 15 years and I'm pretty reliable on my counting my resistances and my supports and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Roku, one of my favorite trades of all, and I really like to scare the bears with this one, Miss Vegas. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, you know what? Roku, I mean, they had news this morning, you know, Roku owners. So if you have Roku TV, um, you can stream Apple's shows starting November the 1st. So it's, called, you know, Apple Plus TV will start next month. So if you're a Roku owner, you can stream its original programming. And the Apple TV app is launching for Roku streaming players and Roku TVs. So like I said, it's going to be available starting November the 1st. The cost is dirt cheap. I mean, $4.99 a month. I mean, that's so cheap. Um, I don't even think you'll miss your $5. You'll get, aside from Apple TV Plus content, you also have access to your iTunes video library. Um, they'll have optional t Apple TV subscriptions for HBO. Um, and so I think this will be a little bit more of a personalized experience uh, for those of you that maybe subscribe to it. And yes, it will be available uh, across the country. However, it will not be supported by certain Roku models. So you have to check your model of the Roku TV that you have, but it will be available pretty much across many, many TVs. So hopefully your TV is not that old. Um, and as a result, I gotta tell you, Roku had a huge gap this morning. I mean, it closed yesterday at 119.12, opened up at 123.18, high of the day was 132.95. What a run this had. I mean, even option calls 
down from 134 um, opened up this morning at around 69 cents. Those ran all the way to 350. I mean, people were just grabbing options left, right, and center. Uh, even option contracts for 135 strike, they opened around 63 cents, went as high as 310. So there was money to be made on Roku. And Jim, I want to hear more about this chart because I'm looking for a continuation if, in fact, it's available. But it's run quite a bit today. It yep. was quite the huge jump. Yeah, it sure has. Now, when this thing was at the Vegas and I called this out at 50 bucks, and it ran all the way from oh, 26.30 yeah. all the way up to 176.55. And I've been very bullish on this trade for a long time, and I still am, even on the pullback, I was still bullish on it. But I knew it would pull back to a support level, and I called it out in the room when it was up here at around 150. I said, don't be surprised if we get down to 88 bucks. I had a 97.65 support. We come very close to hitting that, and then ever since then, she's turned around and gone upwards and became bullish. So we didn't quite get down to that 200 at 95.43, but yet we did hit that 97.65. Now I called this bottom out in the room right here when it was at 105. We had a pattern, a triple bottom pattern right in this area right here. And I called that out in the room and it ran all the way up and hit my resistance line between 124, 123 and 124. And then today we had that beautiful run off that news and we hit a resistance level that I called out at 134. We're going to pull up the, two, uh, up the uh, one day, one minute. I had a 134.10 resistance that I called out and we had 133.80. So we come within 30 cents of hitting that target. But we did hit all the other targets that I did call out in the room today. And this was a beautiful play. I know some people that, that in the room that just had very small accounts, and they made two or $300 on this trade alone. And right now we're pulling back just a little bit, but I'm still bullish on it. Now, I know the Bears really have an appetite for this, but I'm not too worried about them. But if it does start in a red trend, wait for the pullback, wait for the reversal. You know when the key is, when you start seeing that reversal, you'll see some kind of pattern. You watch that tape, and you watch the level two. But for right now, I think we have a low support. I'm going to draw a new support channel in here between this. I mean, it can drop down to this area right here at 129.69. And I'm just adding a few more trend lines in here to where I think it's comfortable, where I've seen a, maybe a consolidated area right in here for the day. If it does get it negative, it can pull back to that area, and that's going to be at 128.62 is going to be your low support. Then you got another one here at 129.69, and then I'm looking right around in here, right around the 131.07. But your first support is going to be right here at 132.91. It definitely could pull back there or run off on the daily and hit that 200 and bounce off that 200. But this is one I don't want you to jump in right in the morning unless you see a trend like this. When you see an engulfing candle like that on a one minute, that's a good clue that this thing is going to go up the rest of the day. And that was pre-market. And I've been calling this stock out probably ever since it was at $50 and it ran all the way to 176 I have a price target on this thing around 140 to 155 A real hard resistance at 155 but... We'll just have to watch this tomorrow first thing and see how she goes. This is my stock. This is Roku. And the next one we're going to talk about is NVDA. Yeah, and you know what? I got to tell you, like so many people think NVIDIA is just all about the computers and about gaming, but they're involved in so many things. I mean, they're into artificial intelligence. I mean, they develop programs. They have so many different platforms they're into self-driving cars they're into gaming they're into deep learning artificial intelligence they're into cloud and data center they're into autonomous machines i mean you've got this company is fantastic and i can't believe the price of this stock and so i want to show you yesterday the market was a bit tough yesterday um yesterday was the 14th of october and I did see an opportunity with NVIDIA because I was looking at the stock and I said, you know, why is it so low? This should not be this price. This stock 
should be uh, obviously towards, you know, towards 200 level. But, you know, the market was pulled, pulled back and I saw an opportunity here with NVIDIA and my goodness, Jim, what a beauty we took yep. on NVIDIA calls. I spotted these beautiful calls. What was it? The $200 strike I got there? Yep. And those were eight cents. Now, when I spotted them, I didn't really look at them till around 3.30 because I was watching them throughout the day and the stock kept pulling back and pulling back. And I thought, you know, this contract's kind of decayed because it went as high as about 28. And I saw an opportunity and I said, you know what? The risk is pretty low to, to put in $8 a contract. Even if someone took 10 contracts, we're talking a risk of $80. Well, you know what? Today was payday on this one because those contracts went to $271 high of day. Um, again, people sold them at different levels that they were wanting to take their profits at. Do you blame them? I mean, $8 going to $270, I mean, $80 turned into $2,000 for some people, or some people it turned into $800. I mean, this is just fantastic. I mean, over a thousand percent gains. <clears throat> um, you can see here, uh, Jim, if you can show that screenshot here, um, so-called Chris, uh, he was saying, wow, over 1,100% gains he had on his option contracts. And uh, you could see also Buddy Fox. I mean, he had a lot of contracts and he's made thousands of dollars on this. So there you go. I mean, the members are telling you up by 1,100%. So we ain't making this up. There's very good opportunity to make very good money. And NVIDIA was just a great opportunity. There was no catalyst behind it. It was just that I liked the beaten down chart and took advantage of the price of a contract. It was a lotto play because, again, so cheap. But, wow, so rewarding today and people banked. Jim, let's hear about NVIDIA. Yep. Well, there's the yearly chart. Now, you you had Wall Street and them talking about a recession for months for weeks you know this economy we're in is one of the strongest economies i've seen in my lifetime and i just like repeating that because i don't listen to them fat cats sometimes i go with my heart and my gut and what i hear out on the street we did have a resistance up here on the yearly chart at 193 this is that real hard sell-off we have right here i'm going to put this resistance slider 190 whoop wrong little thing got to change this Put the dollar sign up there right there at 192.78 that's going to be the pullback support for the first one and if i see any more in here on the yearly i see one right here at 190.62 i'm adding that one in there but we were up here at a 249.88 high at the beginning of uh, the 52 week end there and then here at the end we had a real hard i mean that back in december remember that sell-off we had my crystal ball mm -hmm. came out and said, get to buying these stocks. And it, if you would have, you'd have ran all the way up here to 192.78. You would have made 70 some dollars on that trade alone in a matter of five months, four months. And it did pull back again, found a little support level, but we've introduced higher lows and higher highs. And now we're up here to that resistance level of right around 200. So that's going to be my long target. We did hit 199.29 today, as you see on this 20-day chart. Now, I break these down yearly, daily, 20-day, one hour, just in case you're curious. So we could see a pullback on this because this had an outlandish run from one uh, down here from 187 something all the way up to 192. So that's a real big run. It needs to consolidate a little. You see what happens when they do have these big hikes. They do like to pull back. So my low support on this trade right now is going to be here at 188.92. I don't think it's going to get down that low, but if it does, that's going to be a strong turnaround for it. But we want to create end up in this channel. That's where we want to stay. And I'm going to draw a trend line on that right now. So I, I won't forget that. Where are we here? Go to the tools. I'm going to draw this trend line right, right about in here. And I want to keep following that trend. I don't want it to go any lower than this 187.59. Like I said earlier, that's going to be your low, 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 low support. You got your third one right here at 188.92. Then you got the 190.62, and you got the 192.78.
And then I'm going to pull up the, the uh, pull up the daily one minute, and I'm going to try to find a couple other support levels. I got one right here at 195.13. It's going to be your first one. We do have a descending pattern, lower highs and lower lows. It could go ahead and soup on up and create that double resistance breakout that we need at 199.20. That's what I'm seeing right there. Or it can pull back to this level right here at 195.13. And then you've got that second support at 192.78 on down to this real strong support here at 190.62. So that's NVDA. NVDA, we'd like to see it go to the 200, but I think it's going to consolidate a little bit tomorrow, maybe pull back and have a real fast rebound. And then next one we're going to talk about is going to be Goldman Sachs. I mean, this trade was just magnificent today. Miss Vegas? Well, you know what? Goldman Sachs, a little disappointing. I mean, obviously they had the earnings and, uh, you know, third quarter profits fell, they said 26% from a year ago. Really, it was just hit by a slowdown in their deal making and losses on their stakes in different companies. I mean, you know, they invested into WeWorks and WeWorks is a flop. And, um, you know, uh, the, you know, the company, you know, they took uh, an $80 million loss. I mean, the turnaround's gonna be slow for Goldman Sachs and it's gonna be a little expensive. Um, but, you know, they've also been spending money on growing the online consumer bank. Um, you know, the um, launching Apple cards, they're integrating a wealth management tool. Um, so there's a lot going on at Goldman Sachs. And you know what? The um, stock had a big knife this morning. But I trade this stock so much that I kind of know the way it behaves. And usually it has a tendency to drop but then it also has the tendency to reverse. And when it does reverse, it comes back really strong if you can catch it in the right channel. So we saw this morning that it had a drop. Let me see here. It went almost to, you know, low of two, I think I saw it this morning, like 201. And it went all the way back up later today. We saw this go all the way up to 208.24. So what a recovery on Goldman Sachs. We took advantage, we took the option calls, we played the ones for 210. Uh, great call from Bud Fox as well. And uh, we were able to get over 100% gains on this stock on Goldman Sachs. And you know what? <clears throat> Very heavy buying after hours too on Goldman Sachs. I saw some huge orders going at four o'clock. So, We'll see if the uh, fat cats want to continue taking this up tomorrow on Goldman Sachs. I think it's still a good company. I like the fundamentals. They did have strong results uh, where they beat expectations in other areas of uh, the market. Just that they took some losses here. But you know what? I still like Goldman Sachs. I think that uh, I think that's going to turn around and, and do quite well. You know, don't forget they oversee. 1.8 trillion dollars of asset management which is actually up six percent from june uh they're still growing their business and their portfolios are getting bigger and they're also in talks with governmental and regulatory authorities um they're looking to resolve an investigation with the malaysian government fund <clears throat> so we'll see how that works out and we'll see if it works out in their favor or if they'll have to just pay a fine and then make it make this all go away anyhow I like Goldman Sachs, my opinion. I still look at it each day, and when there's an opportunity, we're on it. Jim, let's hear about Goldman Sachs. Chart. Yep. Well, you know, I've called, we've been playing this trade here for, for a little while now, and I've got a yearly chart right here, and I've had a support level here at the 195.14. And the last time we called this out, it, was, it hit that, and it ran all the way up to almost a lower high of a double top at 221.56 and then she's kind of pulled back and we've been able to scalp this in and out for the last couple of months now, we did hit a high today and it did pull back as you can see we had a double bottom again at that red line support area on the 20 day and it was at 195.14 and we hit it two times so I called this out in the room and then you, within uh, that was last week and she ran on up and hit a resistance of 207.23 and pulled back that next day and ran right back up 
and created a higher high. Well, today the earnings came out and they weren't too good, but they did pull back. And I see another trend line I'm going to put right here at 199.25 for a low, low, low support. If this thing gets under 200, I think she'll stop there, but I want to see it create a new higher high or a higher low and a higher high. I'm thinking maybe if it pulls back, we're going to see 203.51, and that would be a low, low, low support. But this is one that you want to watch the trends on. I mean, this thing, when it runs in a trend, it runs real well. And we're going to pull up the daily one minute. You can see what happened. It pulled back real hard this morning. When the earnings came back, it was up here at an all-time, up. I mean, at here at 208.62 pre-market, but then, bam, it got sucked into under 20, under two. 200 and then we started noticing the trend that it started to run up once that nine crossed at 34 we were off to the races and it did find a little support level right here on the 200 EMA these are EMA moving averages I have the nine the 34 and the 200 I use these quite often and then we had a, an ascending triangle breakout called it out in the room I showed people you know we like to teach people patterns and stuff and I said, watch this, baby. It's, it's, it had lower highs, and we had a neckline or a resistance line right here. And it did break out once, which really gave me a good attitude that this thing was going to bounce up. But it held that trend. It held that trend on that bottom line. So when I called this out in the room, it wasn't within a minute. It started to break out again. It took a little time to consolidate with higher, high, higher lows. And then we almost hit that resistance that I had at 208.39 that I mentioned up here pre-market so it has pulled back now we've had some little lower lows and lower highs we're up here at the 200 we're starting to squeeze and now I think this thing can consolidate and pull back so don't try to rush into the trade let it come to you I've got a 204 204.50 low support on this trade right now but it can pull back to let me get yeah I gotta double click this what did I say 204.50 I like to stay with that same number. There we go. 204.50 is going to be your low, low, low support. Resistance that we got to break is going to be adjusted right here to around 208.18. And that's Goldman Sachs. Keep this on, on your monitor. It's a great one to be playing options in, especially when they follow the trends. The trend today was up after that good sell off. And I'm great at playing these little dead cat bounces. And bam, man, what a great trade. And that's it for the market after market report. We did have someone in the room mention today that he joined the room here just a couple weeks ago. He started trading options. He went from 500 to 5,000, I think, in two weeks. So congratulations, and you know who I'm talking about. Miss Vegas? Yeah, I just want to say uh, congratulations to many people, and that's why we have a free trial. We, you know, we have our free trial. Come check it out. Come see if options works for you. I'm very happy to say that the penny stocks are starting to move too. Yep. So oh, we're making yeah. money on penny stocks again. So, I mean, great opportunity on all angles. Just depends what you like to trade. And uh, have to say, there's so much things to trade today in particular. Uh, it's like you didn't even know what to trade because there's just too much to trade. So just stay focused on what works for you, your strategy. And uh, if you were here to help, and uh, if you want to come by and visit, please feel free. Love to meet you. Yep. Well, this is also, we have, this is our website. We have a Twitter link right here. If you could hit that little icon and follow us on Twitter, that would be great. We have now 674 followers. We just opened this up a couple months ago. And then also we have on the website, we have our stock twits pages. You can follow Pinterest, YouTube channel, and then we have a little store here where you can buy some merchandise. So this is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is October 15th, 2019, and we love stocks.